The next platform that I've developed over the course of the last uh, five, five to seven years is working in the area of, again, drug delivery. So everything that I do has a very common theme. And uh, in that context, we'll be looking at cannabinoids because we know that globally there's a number of jurisdictions which are approving uh, cannabinoids. But, you know, when this was first brought to me, I, I, I was just like, no, I can't work with these because ultimately, you know, we're looking at patients smoking and as a pharmacist, first and foremost, and, and, you know, that's against all my principles and all my teachings and I'm not going to be uh, condoning smoking to any of my patients. But I said, look, I have a solution to this uh, and that is a universally acceptable solution. So we're not just talking about a platform which can be used in adults. This platform is also equally applicable to children and neonates as well. And it's essentially using a sol gel technology. So why the nasal uh, delivery route? The nasal delivery route allows us direct nose to brain delivery. So bypassing what we call the blood brain barrier, which is notoriously difficult to overcome in drug delivery. The blood supply that feeds the nasal cavity and also the oral cavity when the drugs traverse across those membrane and gets into the circulation, on the first pass through the body, it doesn't encounter the liver. Now, a liver, the, our livers are a machine full of enzymes, and they chop everything up. And the cannabinoids are highly prone to rapid metab uh, metabolism, right? So they break broken down very rapidly. So it gives us an opportunity for on the first pass for those cannabinoid molecules to go around the body and to be deposited in those target tissues. And so we've got the potential for much greater efficacy, reliable dosing, and also improved convenience because we're looking at the nasal route. So you're probably asking, well, what are these nasal sol gels? Well, let me explain. <coughs> nasal sol gels take two basic forms. They are a liquid in the room temperature state, but once you spray them into the nose and they hit the warm mucosa at the back of them in our sinuses, they form a gel. And so that sets them way apart and ahead of normal nasal sprays. So when you spray them, within minutes, the vast majority is drained away and ingested into the stomach. And that's a no-go for cannabinoids because we know that the first thing they're going to hit when they get absorbed is the liver. And, and that's uh, basically totals of the molecules completely in terms of their effectiveness. And so we have been working for a few years uh, with my physician uh, colleagues in engineering the sol gels so that we can spray them into the nose. <laughs> and the objective here is, you know, you ask the obvious question about you know, running and sleeping and how are we going to maintain those sol gels in the nasal cavity over that uh, extended period. Well, we've been working on uh, engineering, and that's why I use the word engineering, because it is an engineering feat to get the desirable flow, spreadability, and all those, the strength of the gel. We need it to re be retained within the nasal cavity. And then also, uh, putting my pharmacist hat on, we also need to make sure that we have a patient-friendly and patient-acceptable approach uh, for delivery. And that's where we're looking at controlled release. Currently, most nasal sprays need to be administered in the morning and again in the evening. And that's because of what I've, why I've already mentioned. Most of it is drained away and washed away. Our sol gels will remain in place, and we're aiming for a once or twice weekly administration. And also, because we are retaining the formulation and we're getting slow diffusion over time, we vastly improve the bioavailability of those cannabinoids across into the system. So we can start now looking at management of chronic diseases where we need a steady state concentration of the drug. And so ultimately, those are the key attributes of our sol gels that we'll be developing uh, moving forward. Uh, this is, in a, in a true sense, you know, this is a, a preceptical in development, if you like. Uh, because we can administer it uh, and ensure that we've got a steady state concentration of the drug to prevent the condition from occurring in the first place. And so the other thing I should stress is that it's not as straightforward as putting cannabinoid molecules into a sol gel. Uh, there's a, a lot more that happens behind the scenes because one of the things with cannabinoid molecules is they don't dissolve in water, right? They're like brick dust. That's what we call them in our pharmaceutical field. Um, whereas gels, what are gels? Gels are just thick and water. If you look at them in terms of their texture, they are an aqueous medium. 
And so there's a lot of technology that goes into putting these cannabinoid molecules into those salt gels. And that's what's taken us years to develop. And we have that proprietary technology and bringing that into Prevacidable.